What's up guys, Shane here from Fugitech 3D Printing and today I have some wood-filled PLA from G-Tech. That's crazy, let's check it out. Welcome back guys. So, G-Tech selling filament, I've only ever seen G-Tech filament on like AliExpress or sometimes even eBay they have it. So when like you buy their machines, they end up like putting out their rolls and stuff like that. But no joke, this came off of Amazon. So they contacted me and asked if I'd be interested in checking some out and they said, hey, we have it on Amazon now, which I thought was a pretty bold thing and it's fulfilled by Amazon as well. So this came like stupid quick. Now I can say for wood filament, the price of this is actually pretty reasonable. So I'm, I'll be really surprised to see how well it actually prints or if it even is wood. But we can tell some of that as soon as we get into it. Uh, as you can tell, super simple brown box, nothing special there. We get into it and it has that pretty telltale spool that a lot of the Chinese filaments uses that's just got that cube design on it. Uh, it is vacuum sealed without a uh, zip lock, which is unfortunate, but it does have the rip though. Let's get rid of that stuff. Yeah. All right, here it is. So it's really hard. It kind of feels like the Robo 3D filament, which had a little bit of texture to it, but it felt a lot really plasticky. So this is kind of in between. So you can really tell a lot of the wood filaments, whether it's wood colored or actually wood filled, the biggest telltale is when you start printing with it, the smell. If it is true wood filled filament, it will smell literally like you have a wood burner and you are burning wood. It smells amazing and you'll know right away that's what it is. Some of them I've used give off very little bit of smell, so they do have some slight particles. Some gave off none, and some give off a ton. Like the Pryline wood filament was amazing to print with and amazing to smell when it printed. It's like, oh, I love it. Reminds me of the outdoors. So yeah, we'll see if this actually is wood filament, and I'll let you guys know what it's like to print with shortly. Welcome back, guys. So I've got a bunch of prints done now with the, the G-Tech wood filament and I had really, really rough results in the beginning. And I mean, rough enough as like this, I mean, the prints were just horrible. Uh, bad layer adhesion, um, I was getting missed layers and under extrusions throughout the print and I was like, what in the world is going on? So after I got through these two vases, which I did first before I did anything else, and I was like, if I can't do the vase, it's gonna suck at everything else. So I put it in my filament dryer overnight. Uh, I just have a food dehydrator that I remodeled to kind of be a, a filament dryer. And then results were much different. Uh, this was also before I did the, the filament drying. And when I came back, prints were just perfect. This actually deformed a little bit in my container as I was printing them. I put them in one of my boxes here so that I can keep everything organized. And this one got a little deformed, but it actually came out great. Uh, I did a, a little Easter bunny here that I probably should have put in my Easter special, but I totally forgot I printed him. Um, so let me give you a look at what it looked like when it was wet, it had moisture in it, and then I'll tell you what it looked like afterwards. And uh, wood filament is even more hygroscopic than like a TPU or regular PLA is just because of the wood particles in there. So you do have to take a little more care when printing with it. But anyways, let me show you. All right, so here is one of the vases that I did and you see all of those holes in there. I got closer. You can see all those holes in there. And those are under extrusions because of the moisture and the moisture was taking place over the film was, it would kind of like boil off. And I didn't actually hear any popping, but I definitely could tell, and up here was really, really bad. And uh, another one here, this one was a little better, but it still wasn't as good. But you can see there's some little imperfections in there, some little holes here and there. So this still was not great. So again, I went ahead and dried it out, and then I was getting a print like this. And this just looks beautiful. Like it really does. It really, really does. It looks just like it should with a good quality wood filament. 
It feels good. It smelled beautiful when it was printing. I love printing wood filament. It's the best smelling filament out there. So it was really, really good for this. Doing a Benchy was a little tough uh, just because the filament is really not suited to print an object like this. It just isn't. Um, maybe if it was, you know, maybe it could be my settings a little bit, but it looks okay. It's an okay Benchy. It's really nothing to write home about. It did extrude okay. The bottom layer was kind of goofy there too. Like that was just, I don't know what was going on with that, but it was just goofy. But yeah, again, it's an okay Benchy. Nothing really great. I did print my coin twice. So here's one of them. Super duper stringy. This is on the i3 Mark III. And then I went ahead and printed this one at a lower temperature on my Anycubic i3 Mega. And a little less stringy, but it's still fairly consistent extrusions. You can see there's kind of a few here that are a little less than uh, perfect. And underneath, actually I didn't even pull the support off of this. I didn't realize that until I was just holding it now. A uh, support is kind of hard to pull off of here, to be honest. It really is not, I don't know if that's just the filament or if it is just how it printed, but support, as you can see right there, does not come off very easily whatsoever. So it could just be, again, a combination of my settings, but I've printed, this is my normal wood profile for what I've printed all the other wood filaments with. And that one was a little bit better, but yeah, it's okay, but it's nothing great. It does have a really good, nice feel to it though. I also had some issues on just some like regular old prints. Like this is nothing special. This is just one of the uh, Tetris tiles that I created in Fusion. And it really shouldn't be anything that hard to do, but it did have some weird lines in the side of it. So it does have some weird lines in the side of it there. And then right here where it did some retraction, it's got like this big booger there. And it just, I mean, it's really bad. You can't even cut it away. It just would look horrible. It was just so weird with this and it didn't even really need retraction. I might even, I guess I didn't turn it off for this, but I could have, and it should have been okay. But I don't know why it just ended up looking so weird. Another weird but simple print is the train track that I've done. It's like a Melissa and Doug and a bunch of them use it, but it's stringy and up here is just weird. And again, it has some really weird uh, boogers on it, which, it just should not really have been there. They're just odd where they ended up showing up at because they're not like extrusion points. And there was a little bit of stringing even inside where the track is. And here's a Father's Day statue. So down here, it started great. But then the further up it got, the worse it got. And so up here, I mean, the con it was so inconsistent and just wobbly and weird um, it didn't, it didn't uh, cool very well. As you can see, there's a lot of sagging on the little kid's butt, but all the rest of it, it's just, it's really, really bad actually. Then, then it comes out and it does this uh, rocket that failed. But uh, I mean, look at the details on there. This actually printed really well after being on the printer for a while. And this printed just great. I mean, beautiful extrusions. This was on the, uh, what was this one on? Oh, this, this was on the i3 Mega. Uh, eventually it, uh, it snagged. Um, my sp one of the other spools shifted and hit that spool, so it stopped. But I mean, beautifully extruded for all this. It wasn't a hole anywhere. Like it looks great all over and it's just base mode. There's nothing special about it. And it did this bunny like really, really well. A uh, little bit of sagging under his ears. Uh, and a little bit of pimpling, that's just a retraction problem to solve, but overall the bunny came out really well. There is some in inconsistencies in some of the layers and you can see the, the zits, but overall, he actually was a pretty good quality in that first layer, it was spot on on this one too. But his tail and under his ears, a little bit of drooping there, which is to be expected, a little bit of it. But it just, the filament acts up one minute and then does pretty decent the next minute. So I'm not really sure how to call this one, except probably, it depends where you're at. If you're in the States, I wouldn't buy this just because there are too many good alternatives 
out there that you can get. Now I did get this through Amazon, GTEx Enemy through Amazon. So they are branching more to the US market where they weren't before as the only time you could get like a GTEx printer or GTEx filament was through AliExpress or sometimes eBay. I got my printer through eBay, my very first one that I bought. Uh, but you couldn't buy their filament there. Now you can buy it there. And now again, they're even selling on Amazon. It's Amazon Prime, so it ships really fast. It's sold or it's shipped by Amazon. But it was just, once I dried it, it started printing better. But then it was hit and miss because once I dried it that first time, I never dried it again. So between the dad statue and this was a few days difference, this being later than the dad statue. So I really can't figure out what its deal is. I think they need to do a little bit more uh, research on their filament and get it a little more uh, consistent. I think this was just a little too inconsistent for what it was. I will save the my maker coins just to try to just see how well they sand and then see how well they take either a stain or just like a polyurethane or just some type of clear coat and see how that absorbs and whatnot and see how much like wood it acts. I'm not a wood expert, but I've done lots of wood projects and I, I've finished several pieces of furniture. So I think I'll be able to tell the differences in it. But again, if you're buying your print online and you're looking for filament to start with um, their PLA might be okay but I would probably give this one a pass sadly uh, it just there's too many inconsistencies compared to all of the other wood filaments I've already tested out which were great this one not so much so that's gonna be it for this one. And that's gonna be it, guys. So whether or not you decide to buy this is up to you. Uh, I hope this video helps you decide either way. If you guys enjoyed the video review, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, a thumbs down. Talk in the comments either way. I'd love to hear from you guys what you guys think about my filament reviews. If you wanna support me on the channel, make sure you hit that big old subscribe button down below and hit the bell icon. That way you get an email notification when I upload new content or I do any live streams. If you wanna support me financially, you can get below me and there's a Patreon link. Don't be a dollar more, get a part of my Patreon squad. I get you access to the Patreon feed and my after show that I do after almost all my new videos. Other ways you can help out, there's one-time donation links and a bunch of affiliate codes down there with some coupons. Make sure you guys check those out. I uh, appreciate anything you guys do, even if it's just to watch a video. So thanks for tuning in guys, and until next time, happy printing.